Hello, it's Stacey Holt from Real Estate Excellence. This short video is a reminder for Queensland property agents, managers, licensees, and all relevant people who um, this may benefit relating to the uh, tragedy uh, of the societal issue of domestic violence. Now, in relation to what I'm privileged to do for a living, and um, part of a major part of that is advisory uh, as part of my Real Estate Excellence membership. It's um, sadly certainly not new that we receive at least three to five times a week and have done for years. Um, requests for support from property managers who've been contacted by tenants who are involved in some sort of domestic or family violence and questions in relating to tenancy law and of course best practice. Tragically, I've just noticed one of the reasons I'm doing this video is in recent uh, months and particularly weeks, the volume of uh, requests for support and advice has astronomically increased. As an example, um, today is the 4th of August 2020, yesterday, Monday morning, by 9.15, we'd had four um, emails from wonderful property managers seeking support and advice about tenancy law and domestic violence. So I just wanted to share with you pertinent information that's in place um, relating to, I just had to change screens, relating to, um, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, domestic violence and during this COVID-19 emergency period. Now I've just changed screens as, as you see. I'm at the RTA website, so um, rtaqld.gov.au. And um, at the COVID-19 changes, domestic and family violence. So as we're all aware, on the 22nd of April, Queensland Parliament passed the Residential Tenancy Roomy Accommodation COVID-19 Emergency Response Regulation. And it came into effect on the 24th of April. So basically we've only had it for three months and it's due at this point to end on the 31st of December, 2020. And uh, I'm not aware of any uh, potential extension, but at the moment that is what it is. One of the key things I always say, and I always will, is basically the legislation is the answer. Okay, so um, property managers and licensees, I urge you if you've not already done, but of course you've um, gone and sourced the legislation and sections 21 to 31 cover domestic violence provisions during this pandemic. Okay, so the laws from the RTRA Act have substantially changed and at this point um, there are these provisions for um, victims of domestic and or family violence in relation to their tenancy contracts. And uh, it covers sole tenants, who's a sole tenant and a victim. And it also covers if there's more than one tenant who uh, is on the tenancy contract in relation to um, if one tenant has to end the tenancy by the new laws um, in relation to the remaining tenants and particularly with bond top ups and more. So, I really urge you to get your um, uh, get information about that. And as I say, the most important thing is that the law is the law. And um, what I'm about to share with you is some quick tips uh, to assist you in our industry and, and these uh, people in these dreadful situations. Uh, I'll just remind quickly, I've just logged into realestateexcellence.com.au members and uh, I'm, I'm on the PME system and basically, if you go into the PME system, the COVID laws special folder, which has got everything and anything about the COVID laws, there's also information there about domestic violence and more. So you know where we are members, if we could be of any further support. So I'm back to the RTA um, website. And basically in a nutshell, I'm just urging you, obviously this is a great resource for you to give to um, tenants and people in need. Also for your client listeners to understand uh, and also for yourself. But I really urge you to look at the law. The devil's always in the detail and the law is always the best, but this is very useful. What's changed for tenants during um, this legislative period until the 31st of December, 2020, current law at the moment? If you're a tenant experiencing domestic and family violence, you can end the tenancy, your interest, well, obviously it's a legal contract, so your legal interest in a tenancy agreement by providing the property owner or manager seven days notice to leave, but you've got to supply appropriate evidence, which is um, um, uh, qualified further. 
So you have to supply appropriate evidence. Goes without saying confidentiality, privacy, um, and all that is, um, is, is certainly um, our industry's number one in all situations, particularly this one. You can leave immediately the tenant after providing the notice and you'll need to pay rent until the end of the seven day period, but you will not be liable for any other costs as long as you've supplied the appropriate evidence. You can request that your rental bond be refunded to you. You can, if you want to stay, you can change the locks to the property without consent, but you must, as a tenant who, if, if they had to do that, provide copies of keys or access codes to the rental property owner or manager as soon as practicable. Now, what's changed for property owners? Now, if there's remaining tenants, as I alluded to earlier, property owners can ask the remaining tenants to top up the rental bond if a bond contribution is refunded to a tenant who ends their legal interest due to domestic and or family violence. Property owners and managers have new obligations to prevent misuse or disclosure, of course, which I've already alluded to, and of course that's a given. Confidentiality, privacy is assured in all times. Giving notice, there's information here. You must complete, there's a domestic and family violence ending tenancy form and providing evidence. The evidence that um, uh, it must be provided or shown is uh, a protection order or a temporary protection order, a police protection order, an interstate order or injunction for personal protection under the Family Law Act of 1975, or a domestic and family violence report. Now that's signed by an authorised uh, professional, which is defined as a doctor, a social worker, or um, a refuge or crisis worker, a domestic or family violence support worker or case manager, an Aboriginal and Torres Strait uh, Islander medical service, a solicitor. Okay, so they're authorised people. So in relation to changing locks, um, the locks have to be changed by a qualified person, uh, a tradesperson or locksmith, and provide copies of the keys within seven days. The um, owner will not be able to give copies of those to anyone unless the tenant agrees. Now remember that, that, that also includes contractors for maintenance, okay? You cannot change locks to common property, of course, so common property with body corporates um, entering assets. And in relation to rental bonds, um, obviously the RTA 1300 366 511 is the best course of action. So there's other information here that you may find useful. Again, it's at the RTA website and there's also key um, uh, information uh, contacts for victims that I urge property managers, of course, to make sure that they also uh, provide to a person uh, who is one of our value tenants who's in a terrible violent situation. So there's good contacts there and there's also a fact sheet. So you're looking at the RTA um, website and basically if you're at the home page, you'll see uh, COVID-19, get help, and then you'll see the domestic violence. Again, if you're a member of Real Estate Excellence, you know where we are, if we can provide any further support on this um, matter or any other matter. So those laws fall under the COVID-19 tenancy laws. And of course, I again, just um, uh, remind you of sections 21 to 31, which are also of value. Thank you for joining me. Take care. And uh, this is Stacey Holt from Real Estate Excellence. Bye for now.